The Gibbonite hangs a south descendant. While David was king, there was three years in a row when the nation of Israel could not grow enough food. So David asked the Lord for help, and the Lord answered, Saul and his family are guilty of murder because he had the Gibbonite killed. The Gibbonites were not Israelites, they were descendants of the Ar Amorites. The people of Israel had promised not to kill them, but Saul had tried to kill them because he wanted Israel and Judah to control all the land. David had the Gibbonites come and he talked with them. He said, What can I do to make up for what Saul did, so that you ask the Lord to be kind to his people again. The Gibbonites answered, Silver and gold from Saul and his family are not enough. On the other hand, we don't have the right to put any Israelite to death. David said, I will do whatever you ask. They replied, Saul tried to kill all our people so that none of us would be left in the land of Israel. Give us seven of his descendants. We will hang this man near the place where the Lord is worshipped in Gibeah, the hometown of Saul. The Lord chosen king, I'll give them to you. David said, David had made a promise to Jonathan with the Lord as his witness. So he spared Jonathan's son, made peace of Seth, the grandson of Saul, but Saul and Rizpah the daughter of Aya had two sons named Armoni and Mephisopath. Saul's daughter Merab had five sons whose father was Aduriel, the son of Basilai from Mehala. David took Rizpah's two sons and Merab's five sons and turned them over to the Gibbonites, who hanged all seven of them on the mountain near the place where the Lord was worshipped. This happened right after, at the beginning of the Be Bare harvest. Rizpa take care of the bodies. Rizpah spared the awesome sackcloth on a nearby rock. She wouldn't let the birds land on the bodies during the day, and she kept the wild animals away at night. She stayed there from the beginning of the harvest until it started to rain. The Breer of Saul and his descendant. Earlier, the Palestines had killed Saul and Jonathan on Mount Gilboa and had hung their bodies in the town square at Bashan. The people of Jabesh in Gilead had the secretary taken the body away, but David found out what Saul's wife Rizbah had done, and he went to the leader of Jabesh to get the bonds of Saul and his son Jonathan. David had their bonds taken to the land of Benjamin and buried in the side room in Saul's family burial place. Then he gave others for the bonds of the man who had been hanged to be buried there. It was done, and God answered prayers to bless the land. 
the descendants of the Rapine. One time, David got very tired when he had he and his soldiers were fighting the Palestines. One of the Palestine warriors was Ishibibonab, who was descendant of Repaim, and he tried to kill David. Ishibibonab was armed with a new sword, and his bronze spears had a long weight about three and a half kilograms. But Ahishai came to the rescue and killed the Palestine. David's soldier told him, We can't let you risk your life in battle anymore. You give light to our nation, and we want that flame to keep burning. There was another battle with the Palestine at Gob, where Sibekai from Husha killed the descendant of the Repaim named Sap. There was still another battle with the Palestine at Gob. A soldier named Erhanan killed Goliath from God, whose spear shaft was like a weaver's beam. Erhanan's father was Jari from Bethlehem. There was another war, this time in Gath. One of the enemy soldiers was a descendant of the Repaim. He was as big as a giant and had six fingers on each hand and six toes on each foot. But when he made fun of Israel, David's new nephew, Jonathan, killed him. Jonathan was the son of David's brother, Simei. David and his soldiers killed these four men who were descendants of Repaim from Gath. 12.2. David sings to the Lord. David sang a song to the Lord after the Lord had rescued him from his enemies, especially Saul. These are the words of David's song. Our Lord and our God, you are mighty, my mighty rock, my forest, my protector. You are the rock where I am safe. You are my shield, my powerful weapon, and my place of shelter. You rescue me and keep me safe from violence. I praise you, our Lord. I pray to you. And you rescue me from my enemies, death like ocean waves surrounded me. I was almost swallowed by its flooding waters. Ropes from the world of the dead had coiled around me, and death had set a trap in my path. I was in tro terrible trouble. When I called out to you, but from your temple you heard me and answered my prayer. Earth, earth sh shook and shivered. The columns supporting the sky rocked back and forth. Your angry and breath out smoke, scorching heat and fiery frames spilled from your mouth. You opened the heaven like a curtains, and you came down with the storm clouds under your feet. You rode on the backs of flying creatures. You appeared with the windest wings Darkness was your tent, thunder 
clouds fill the sky, hiding you from sight. A fiery coast lit up the sky in front of you. Lord most high, your voice, your voice thundered from the heavens. You scattered your enemies with arrows of lightning. You roared at the sea, and its deepest channels could be seen. You snorted, and the earth shook to its foundations. You reached down from heaven, and you lifted me from deep in the sea, in the ocean. You rescued me from enemies who were hateful and too powerful for me. On, on the day disaster struck, they came and attacked, but you defended me. When I was fasting, you freed and rescued me because you, you love me. You are good to me, Lord, because I do right, and you reward me because I am innocent. I do what you want and never turn to the to do evil. I keep your laws in mind and never turn away from your teachings. I obey you completely and guard against sin. You have been good to me. Because I do right, I have rewarded me for being innocent by your standards. You are always loyal to your loyal people, and you are faithful to the faithful. With all who are sincere, you are sincere. But you treat the unfaithful as their deeds deserve. You ask the humble, but you look for ways to put down the proud. Our Lord and God, you are my lamp. You turn darkness to light. You help me defeat armies and capture cities. Your way is per perfect, the Lord, and your word is correct. You are a shield for those who run to you for help. You alone are good, God. Only you are a mighty rock. You are my strong forest fortress. You are semi free. You make my feet run as fast as those of a deer, and you help me stand on the mountains. You teach my hands to fight and my arms to use a bow of bronze. You, all, you alone are my shield, and by coming to help me, you have made me famous. You cleared the way for me, and now I own stumble. I kept chasing my enemies until I caught them and destroyed them. I destroyed them. I stuck my swords through my enemies, and I was crushed under my feet. You helped me win victories and forced my attackers to fall victim to me. You made my enemies run, and I killed them. They cried out for help, but no one saved them. They called out to you, but there was no answer. I ground them to dust. I squashed them like mud in the street. You rescued me from my stubborn people and made me the leader of foreign nations, who are now my slaves. They obey and come crowing. They have lost their courage and from their forest. Fortress, they come trembling. You are the living Lord. I will praise you. You are a mighty rock. I will honor you for keeping me safe. You 
took revenge for me and you put nations in my power. You protected me from violent enemies and you made me much greater than all of them. I will praise you, Lord. I will honor you among the nations. You give glorious victories to your chosen king. Your faithful love for David and for his descendant will never end.